if you are mentally agile if you are mentally strong then my belief is that you can conquer lot of things you can make your fitness better you can see a dream and then work towards getting your dream true so that comes with the mental mental progressness if you are not mentally strong then you give it away then you stop half way you don't go the full length to go the, go the full length you have to be uh, the upper story has to be pretty strong so that's how i also feel uh, sir and uh, he was kind enough to say good words about the army as such uh, the forces are there for uh, the forces are there for the country the citizens of the country they are there for them so it's part of a job part of a duty Uh, before we start the session as such how many of you want to join army not many from the girls side but i can see a lot of hands after your lecture many may raise their hand yeah that's what that's what my endeavor is <laughs> after the end of the lecture uh, i'll ask the same question again and i hope that we have we'll have more hands uh, towards this profession you know why this session is about you know something like a career opportunity or even army as a job but when i say this profession only as a job or as a profession then it is not right it is a job it is a career yes but it is a career which gives you an opportunity to serve the motherland to serve your fellow countrymen so that way it is a noble profession which is your career also and becomes a lifestyle you live the career you live your job and there are not very many job not only in the country in the entire world which can give you that kind of satisfaction you are doing your job you are doing your profession but at the same time what you get the satisfaction that you get out of serving your motherland serving your own fellow countrymen is immense keep that at the back of your mind okay there will be certain uh, entry points which we have for officers categories and other than officers categories which i'll be covering during my lecture but please remember that you know these are all based on government policies and there are times wherein the government policies change over the period of time so to keep yourself updated it is this website this link www.joinindianarmy.net.in which you can keep visiting periodically so that you stay updated with respect to the policies so any policy change gets updated here so what i am telling you is the policy of the day what how we recruit or how we uh, commission officers as on date is what i am going to uh, share with you okay firstly what i'll uh, how how the session will uh, I'll, i'll cover is first i'll give you a brief introduction to the army life as such then we'll ask a question to ourselves why to join and i'll try to answer that that why should you join and then of course the all important question now that we've made up our mind to join how do we move ahead how do we join the forces okay we are all the way we are the second most largest land force uh, in the world the first is the chinese army and we should take pride in that part given the fact that us china the kind of economy these countries have the kind of history these countries have is of is india and still india has the second largest force so that speaks volume and one of the forces of the world which is actually gone to war it is not that that the forces are there and uh, just for existence the indian army has actually physically fought four wars and numerous other Small, which I am not covering. So 
right from 48 to 271, we had four wars, and all the wars were won by Indian Army. The latest a full fledged war was of Target. So that was way back in 1999. Correct. It was in the midst of 99, summer of 99, and maybe for the Kargil and Dras sector, it was still winter. For the country, it was summer. And I still remember that was the war which was brought to the drawing rooms of the cities. It was telecasted, most portion of it was telecasted live by the media channels. And that point in time, I was uh, a second term trainer in my uh, academy. I had still not passed out. This war happened somewhere around June, July, if I'm uh, not wrong. And I passed out in the month of December. Apart from this active wars, the army also is involved in what we know call as counter insurgency ops. Insurgency or militancy. You understand that? Wherever there is militancy, wherever there is uh, a difference of opinion between, let's say, the state forces or neighboring state forces as well as the central uh, institution, then the insurgency or the militancy is there. So the army is also involved in countering that kind of scenario. As a country, we share borders with the neighboring countries. We have Bangladesh, Nepal, Pakistan. China, Bhutan, and out of the two, out of these all these four five countries, which are those two countries with which we do not have good relations, Pakistan and China. So in a way, we are <coughs> always in a state of war with these two countries. War can be physical, wherein the actual uh, fight takes place be it in terms of combat, be it in terms of air force, be it in terms of naval attack. And there is something known as proxy war. It's a no war, no peace kind of a situation, wherein everything looks OK on top, but at the back end, there are a number of issues which are going on. So coming to the role of uh, the army as such, so what's the primary role? To defend. The territorial integrity against external aggression. Territorial integrity of whom? Of the country, of India. Okay. We have to protect the borders. We have to ensure that the integrity, the territorial integrity is always maintained. And whom do we fear? We fear people from outside. That is the external aggression. So the primary responsibility is to guard the territorial integrity of a country. And then comes the secondary role. As I said, not every time we are at war. We train for war. So that is the time we are at peace locations where training happens. We take time away from the war-like situations. So at that point in time, a secondary role is also given to the army, wherein if there is a need, if we are requested by the state or central government, then some portion of army, a few columns of army are also trained to provide aid to civil authorities. So what kind of aid? We'll cover in the next slides. Okay. So when I say army or the Indian army, it's a big word which encompasses so many elements. In any uh, society or organization or a corporate office, you have various segments, isn't it? In a college also, you have a principal's office, then you have you know, an arts uh, compound, you may have a commerce compound, you may have a science compound, doesn't it happen that way? So in army also, we have two type of, let's say, sections. One is the arms, the other is the services. Broadly speaking, for your understanding, the arms are the ones which get involved directly or from a distance in an active war. And the services are those regiments or the units which support the fighting arms or the fighting units. So you have units which get involved in fighting and then you have units which support the fight. Okay? So if I have to go and fight, I need uniform, I need a weapon, 
I need amenities. <coughs> I need food. I need vehicle. I need petrol diesel for that vehicle. I need to ensure that my weapons are working. I need to ensure that vehicles are working. So all this support oh. ensuring is being done by whom? By the service. Understood? So what all units or what all uh, can to classify as arms is? Somebody used from infantry. Somebody used from armored or mechanized infantry or the AAD. Army and defense, or from artillery, or from the special forces, paras. So, if you are, if you happen to be serving in these units, then you are from the. You classify that you are from arms. Okay. Like I am from artillery. So I am from the regiment of artillery. Further moving, then you have got engineers, aviation, intelligence, signals. All these are what. These are arms. But they are also known as combat support arms. So they are arms involved in fighting and the combat world. And then comes the services. So I said there has to be somebody who has to take care of vehicles, take care of food, take care of uh, the health, take care of vehicle, uh, the weapons. So all these units of EME, AOC, ASC, medical, these are all what? Services. Now comes the question, why join the army? No, you guys are what? Maybe in uh, pioneer years or uh, second year of your colleges? No. This is the time. Are you thinking ki post graduation, what should I do? Are you you started thinking now? Or, or you're still not thinking, ki okay, I'll think after doing my graduation. Is it that way? This is the age. When I was your age, when I was doing my BCom second year, that is the time I started thinking, ki, what next? There were options. That day, you know, 21, 20 years back, there were not very many options. The corporate world had still not come. Very few people, those who had money, used to go for MBA. People who were from middle class families, but still used to look for government jobs. They used to feel, okay, let me give exam of a bank. Or maybe survey of India, maybe railways, you know, those kind of things. Nobody came to us and gave us a lecture or motivated us to join our. It is just that I happen to be from Dehradun. I mean, which is that academy which is in Dehradun? I am Indian Military Academy in Dehradun. So it was close to my house. So I used to see early morning, I used to see the trainees going for a run, you know, very smart dress, a good haircut moving around the uh, city. So I got motivated seeing them. I got influenced by their lifestyle and style. So that is why I gave the exam and God was kind and I cleared it. But today you have people coming to you, taking the lecture, motivating you, informing you what is it and what you should be doing to join. So that's a very good informative sessions that you guys are having. We, don't, we did not have anything of those kinds back at our, in our times. So when you think of a job, what is that you want? Anybody will want financial security that I should get handsomely paid, isn't it? After studying so much, after acquiring knowledge, you want to get into a job which gives you money. You want to take up a job which gives you stability. It shouldn't happen, you join any job in 2022 and in 23 or 24, it gets affected by economic slowdown, by change of board of directors, by change in the government policies, and then you are chucked out of your job. Do you want that kind of a scenario? COVID, two years of COVID, not very many people lost their jobs, especially of the private sector. You don't want that kind of scenario, you want stability. Growth and development. What you join at the age of 22 or 23, 5 years, 10 years, 15 years down the line, you want to improve. You need to have a growth. You need, need to have development of career. You cannot join in a position at a particular age and continue to remain that for the life. 
there has to be a progressive mechanism which few jobs cater for it and most jobs cater for only in case you develop your professional capability then will you not like to have a job which gives you a bit of adventure feel or excitement when you are doing that job isn't it or you want a job where in at 9 o'clock you go sit behind a computer and <coughs> desk work for the complete day till 4 o'clock behind that same computer and desk day in day out you want that kind of job or you want okay, an element of adventure or excitement has to be there which keeps you alive keeps you going isn't it and then of course comes with the job you are looking at improvement in your status you want people to respect you society to respect you you when you go back to your hometown or village the neighbors your relatives you want that kind of a job wherein you know, those people respect you isn't it then improvement in your lifestyle have some time to yourself and to your family also basically a work life balance now some people may be thinking but that doesn't happen in army there's no work life balance you're always in uniform always on the border always fighting a war that is where the story that is what is shown in movies that is where in the hero wearing a combat uniform having four rifles on his shoulder jumping from one mountain to another firing constantly firing his ammunition will not finish he is always fighting he doesn't have a home he is always in the jungles or in the mountains so that is what the movies are movies are what fancy land they are made to entertain you for 3 hours but is that so in army is that the lifestyle we are living we shall see good that you said no apart from all this these are certain intangibles also what are these intangibles from your job you want your organization to take care of your family you want that there, there have to be some travel opportunity so that you go out see the world or see the country meet new people get some time off and in case your job can take care of your medical aspirations can provide avenues for education for your family then it becomes a complete job a wholesome job isn't it so money may not be the only thing if other facilities and perks and compensate for that money so then the job becomes a complete job what is the point of earning money but not having time to yourself or for the family what will you do of that money you can buy a good house a good a fancy car but then you don't have time from morning 8 o'clock to evening 8 o'clock you are working you do not have time to enjoy that house you do not have time to sit in that vehicle enjoy a good drive is that the use of that money no so having seen what all i want from a job now we shall see what the army offers you firstly we shall see certain you know very very important tenets of the training that we get in army what it all is based on first comes the word esprit de corps loosely translated it means one for all and all for one that is what the family of army believes in we believe in brotherhood and there is no distinction of caste creed or religion the indian army is a big one big family wherein we take care of each other spirit of selfless sacrifice you know we have three ends we have three ends naam naam is name namak salt nishan insignia so that is what we believe in the name of my unit the izzat of my unit of my organization is it namak is the have you heard that idiom ki agar namak khaya to gaddari nahi karenge so that is what is if the organization is taking care of my bread taking care of my needs then of course i cannot 
We are Gaddar in that loyalty to the nation and Nishan. Nishan is the symbol or the flag of your unit or the army. Like the you have Indian uh, nation flag, the tricolor. You always salute it, respect it. Similarly, every unit, every arm has its own flag, and that is the mark of respect for any army or personnel. Then comes Villa. It is the training which will take care of it, this aspect. The training will ensure that in the face of enemy, you do not fear anything. You see the enemy in his eyes and then do the needful. Non-discrimination. As I said earlier, there is no discrimination as far as caste, creed or religion is concerned. Your background doesn't matter to us. As far as we are concerned, either you are an officer or you are a soldier. A trained officer or a trained soldier. That's it. Where do you come from? Which state you belong to? Which language do you speak? Which region do you belong to? Is immaterial. The army follows a system of sarv, dharm, sthal. Can anybody tell me what, what it will mean? Sarv, dharm, sthal? Pardon? Somebody say No. A good attempt, but that may not be the correct one. You know, all of us have a particular religion. Somebody is a Hindu. Did you decide to be a Hindu? It just happened that you, you know, took birth in Hindu army and so on and so forth. But the army, religion are one. Your actually, your, our religion is Indian. So you, we have place of worship. Wherein all we go and worship, we do not worship a particular religion. We worship all the religions. So it is serve all dharm, religious sthal place. So that is it is, it is not called a temple or a gurdwara or a mosque or a church. It is called Sarvdhamstar. So that is what? So there is no discrimination the difference. One string, you are a soldier. You are a man in uniform or a woman in uniform. Fairness and honesty. Your training, the discipline that you have will ensure that you are always fair. You are not partial Toward any in I can be saying, even when you catch hold of an enemy, you are not partial to him. You do not bring any injustice even to the enemy. Discipline and integrity, two very, very important pillars of army. If you do not have, if you are not loyal, if your integrity is not to the maximum, and if you are you cannot progress in your life. Yes. If you cheat in the exam, okay, maybe a moment is this. But my belief is every cheater will get caught. So you have to be loyal. You have to be true to your heart. When you go to sleep in the night, you should sleep with a clear conscience. So that's what your training, that's what the army life will make sure. So discipline, integrity, impart the feeling of patriotism, honesty, and courage. So that is what. It instills, that is what it makes a soldier or an officer capable of. Okay? Fidelity, honor, and courage. You know, as a, as a part of the armed forces, the defense forces, you should be proud in knowing the fact that when everything fails, the army is folded. Or the defense forces are requested. That's where I was talking about aid to civil authority also. That's not the primary job. That's the secondary job. And why it is a secondary job is when everything fails. When the civil administration fails, will the law fails, when the paramilitary or anything else which the government will plus to take care of the situation fails, the armed forces 
are called upon. So you are last pillar. You are the last man standing when the country has okay. no can do it. And who can do it? The army. That's to dishonor. And there's a big party. When we take care of each other. When you serve in the units. So this is, if you motivated. Being called a coward. Okay. Fourth rightness. Ladies and gentlemen, in army you will lead a team. When you lead a team, 